Why do we need an epistemically neutral definition of the word fact? Well, consider this statement. I used to believe X, but now I realize I had the facts wrong. This is not an unusual expression. I used to believe that dolphins were fish, but now I realize that I had the facts wrong. Dolphins are actually mammals. Now, what would we be saying here if we interpreted the word facts in this sentence in the epistemically loaded sense? It would be very strange. You can't admit that you were wrong about the facts if the very use of the word facts implies that you believe that you have good reason to believe that your claim is true. It would be like saying, I now realize that my true beliefs are false. To talk about facts being wrong, you can't use the epistemically loaded sense of the word because the epistemically loaded sense presumes that you don't think you're wrong. Here's another one. I'm here to uncover the facts of the matter. That's all. It's the kind of thing an investigative reporter or a forensic detective might say. We can't use the loaded sense of fact here either. Here, the facts of the matter is just a placeholder for whatever will eventually be uncovered. You can't interpret the facts in this sentence as beliefs that a community believes are so well supported by the evidence that it would be rational to change them, because there are no such beliefs yet. Uh, they have yet to be discovered. We can make the same point another way. We may not know whether there is life on other planets, but there is some fact of the matter about this question. Either there is or there isn't. How is this expression, fact of the matter, being used here? Well, not in the epistemically loaded sense. We're admitting that we don't know which of these options is going to turn out to be true. The expression doesn't imply anything about the epistemic status of the claim. Again, it's just a placeholder for whatever the truth turns out to be. And this is the key to the epistemically neutral definition of the word fact. Sometimes we use the word fact to simply describe a true claim. To say X is a fact is just to say that X is true. That's it. And this is an epistemically neutral usage of the word. It doesn't imply anything about the epistemic status of the claim. So just to be clear, to say that X is true is not to say that we have good reason to believe that X is true, or even that anyone believes that X is true. Maybe no one believes that X is true. It could still be the case that X is in fact true. So let's look at how this reading helps with our examples. I used to believe X, but now I realize I had the facts wrong. On the neutral reading of facts, where a fact just means a true claim, then to say that I had the facts wrong is just to say that I now realize the claim is false. I used to believe that dolphins are fish. Now I realize that dolphins are not fish. My belief was false. It makes perfect sense. How about this one? I'm here to uncover the facts of the matter. That's all. That translates as I'm here to uncover the truth. That's all. The facts of the matter are just what happens to be true. We may not know whether there is life on other planets, but there is some fact of the matter about this question. What does this mean? Just that one of these options is true and the other isn't. Either there is life on other planets or there isn't. That's all we're saying when we say that there is some fact of the matter. So what we're saying here may seem like a subtle difference, but it actually makes a huge difference to what we're asserting when we use the word fact. To say that a claim is a fact in the epistemically neutral sense is simply to say that the claim is true. To say that a claim is a fact in the epistemically loaded sense is to say that the claim is believed to be true within a particular community and believed in such a way that within that community it would be regarded as irrational to challenge it or doubt it. But it's a crucial distinction for science because we need a term in our scientific vocabulary and in our critical thinking vocabulary for talking about our beliefs about the world and distinguishing that from talking about the way the world actually is, independent of our beliefs. We need this to be able to talk in a coherent way about falsehood, about what it means for our beliefs to be false. Now, in the next video, I want to clear up a common misconception about the way we use the term fact in science. And these distinctions here will make that much easier.